Good morning. Good morning. Great to uh, have you join us today on Soap for the Soul. Thank you for joining. Hopefully you can hear me and uh, if you can just put some comments up on the screen, say good morning, say hello. Uh, feel free to comment to one another. Feel free to share this post. We're working through uh, the Psalms. We're not going to go all the way through 150 of them, but we're going to do the first um, dozen or so in this season uh, in the Psalms in Soap for the Soul. And again, I'm conscious that some people maybe are watching or joining for the first time. And SOAP is a simple little acronym uh, written uh, by um, in a book called The Divine Mentor by uh, an American pastor called Wayne Cordero. And it's just a way to help you journal for yourself as you read the Bible. And I use my own journal. I make my own notes as I work my way through uh, Scripture. And S is I write down the Scripture, a verse, a text, a phrase, a paragraph. O is observation, what I observe it's saying in its context. A is application, what is God saying to me right now, today? And P, I write down a prayer, uh, which is my way of reflecting again on what God is saying and praying it into my own heart and life. We're reading Psalm 3 today, the third Psalm, and I'm going to read the whole Psalm. A uh, couple of things to point out. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And also, <clears throat> in some of the Psalms, because they're songs, uh, there's this little word that appears in some of our translations. The word is Selah, and it, it simply means stop, reflect. Um, it can also be a musical expression that in the New Living Translation is written as interlude or musical interlude. Uh, Sadly, we're not having a musical interlude. You may all uh, turn off at that point. So I'm going to use the little word Selah, S-E-L-A-H, which you'll find in most translations. And there are at least two occurrences of that in Psalm 3. So I'm going to read the whole of Psalm 3. And the introduction says, A psalm of David regarding the time David fled from his son Absalom. O Lord, I have so many enemies, so many are against me. So many are saying, God will never rescue him. Selah. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. Selah. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety, for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of ten thousand enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God. Slap all my enemies in the face, shatter the teeth of the wicked. Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. Selah. Psalm 3 gives the setting in the prelude, uh, that little introduction that's not noted as a verse, but is part of the psalm. It's like a musical introduction. You'll have noticed some say for stringed instruments or uh, other such things. But this one says, a psalm of David regarding the time David fled from his son Absalom. That's the setting. David is being chased at this point. You can read this in uh, the books of Samuel, 1 and 2 Samuel. You'll read the story of King David there. David has been chased from the throne by an uprising, by a rebellion led by his son, Absalom. This is a prayer of victory, but uttered perhaps in the midst of the pursuit. David perhaps has gone to sleep on the run, hiding again in a cave. Who is friend and who is foe is uncertain to him. Who is siding with the king and who is with the rebellion. Perhaps as he goes to sleep, he realises that he may not wake up. He has a band of men travelling with him. But who is on the king's side and who backs the rebellion? Perhaps he won't wake up because in the night his throat will be slit or he will be suffocated while he sleeps. 
He prays and commits his way to the Lord. His daily dawn break prayer is one of thanksgiving. For the Lord was watching over me. Verse 3 is his realization, his declaration of the truth. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. Maybe you too have enemies. Maybe I do too. Yet I wonder if David ever personally regretted at least part of his prayer. I hope it made you at least chuckle when he prayed, slap all my enemies in the face, shatter the teeth of the wicked. I bet you felt like praying that too. And let's be honest, no one else is listening. Maybe you have. But Jesus says, love your enemies. Only a little while later, and this is why I wonder if David ever regretted at least part of his prayer. You know, the Bible is very honest. Because it's in the word of God and is the word of God, doesn't mean that every verse in it is a good thing to do. The book of Job, for example, is full of uh, Job's friends counseling him and giving him advice. As a young man, I read the book of Job and I thought, what sound godly advice? And then you get to the end of the book where God turns up and says, who is this who speaks without wisdom? Who speaks without knowing the whole picture? So let's understand that whilst David prays, slap my enemies in the face and break their teeth, that doesn't mean you and I should. Why? Well, because the rebellion is eventually quashed. And news comes to David that his son Absalom has been killed. And he weeps. Oh, Absalom, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The grief of a father. Whoever your enemies, there is only one safe place for refuge. To hide in a hollow, the hollow of the hand of the Lord. My girls love Marvel, uh, not the comics, but the comic movies based on them. And as a family during lockdown, we have been watching the uh, programme. We've been binge watching the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. In it, there is a team uh, of people who are determined to be a shield to save the world from harm. But David says, you, O Lord, are my shield. Your enemies might be human and people may hate you. There might be those who've really got it in for you. Or at least maybe it feels like that. But Paul reminds Christians, if you're a follower of Jesus, that we are indeed in a battle and the battle is not necessarily human in its origin or in its nature. We are in a battle with an enemy who does not fight clean but consistently fights dirty. So Paul writes, to the Christians in the New Testament letter called Ephesians, to the city of Ephesus where there were, was a Christian church. He writes to them in Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the evil one. You and I are in a battle, not just a battle with a pandemic, a virus, the battle of being locked up in our homes, of being isolated from friends and family, of not being able to carry on with the normal things of life in the way that all of us have experienced through all of our lives to this point. Now we're in a deeper battle and it's a battle for the mind, for the heart, for the soul and your enemy fights dirty and he wants to destroy you, he wants to kill you. Jesus says you have an enemy who climbs in over the wall of the sheep gate where Jesus is the good shepherd who's the door of the sheep who's taking care of you and that enemy wants to steal and kill and destroy and you and I need to know it but David declares right at the end of his psalm that victory comes from you O Lord I hope you're able to meditate and reflect on that today the Lord is my shield Victory comes from you, O oh Lord. I'm going to pray, and usually I um, 
uh, pray with my eyes shut and don't read my prayer from my journal uh, as we share together here on Facebook because usually the prayer I've written is very short, just a one line simple heart response and reflection. But today I've written something a little longer. I'm, I've written the prayer of putting on the armour of God from Ephesians 6. So I want to read it as our prayer as we draw this morning's thought to a close. Pray this with me. Lord, thank you that you are my shield, a shield around me. Today I ask you to protect my mind with the helmet of salvation. Protect my heart with the breastplate of righteousness and my gut with the belt of truth. Help me as I catch enemy arrows in the shield of faith and as I seek to win battles with your word in my hand, the sword of your spirit. Help me, Lord, never to stop walking in gospel shoes, telling others about you. And thank you that always the way of prayer is open for me to come into your presence and make my needs known. Lord, I pray that as I wear the armour of God, you will help me to stand. In Jesus' name, Amen. May God bless you and take care of you and give you a good day today. And God willing, we'll be back again tomorrow for Soap for the Soul, a season in the Psalms. Thanks for joining. Please continue to comment or share with others. The Lord bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.